Okay, here is how I made this short film in Blender. Creating the character. Go to Mixamo, download the zombie model. Bring it into Blender. Model a sci-fi box around his head. Add some details with kit bash objects. Use curves to create cables that connect him to this omniscient source in the sky. Use Ctrl H to hook the cables to the helmet. Parent the box to the headbone. So, how do we make him a silhouette? Delete the materials that came with the model and create a new one. Delete the principal shader. Now he is a silhouette. Create an emission shader and assign it to some spots of his face. Now we got a character for our short film. Creating the environments. Now I had a collection of building assets that I used to build all of the scenes and a few low poly street assets to add some more detail. All of these assets had a very complex shader. Now go to the material tab, make sure to remove all of the materials. Okay, we're done. No, seriously, they didn't have any material at all. There's quite a lot you can do with a little bit of volumetric lighting and simple geometry. With all of these assets, creating a new scene is a pretty fast kit bash process. Just copy and paste these assets until you find something that fits your idea for the composition of this shot. Now, the good thing about the story concept of this short film is that it all takes place in this labyrinth, which allowed me to use the same assets over and over again, what kinda made sense in the relation to this idea that the main character is trapped in this maze out of repeating patterns that he can't escape from. Now bring in the street assets and add more detail and shapes to the building walls. Switch to the rendered view. The whole short film was rendered in Eevee, so no worries about the render time. I used the same world settings for every shot. Add in a principled volume shader. Set the emission color to blue and the strength to 0.02. And set the density to 0.01. Create an area light to mimic the light from the night sky. Give it some blue color. To make the street lamps, apply an emission shader to their emitting faces. Because in EV emission materials don't cast any real light, add in an area light to fake it. I scattered some garbage on the ground with a particle system. Add some rain puddles to the ground. Create a new material. Add in a noise texture. Scale it up. Add more contrast with a color ramp. Increase the detail. Plug it into the roughness. Activate screen space reflections in the render settings to make the reflections actually visible. Put the noise texture into a bump node. Decrease the strength. Let's bring in the characters. The main character of this short film is also just a Mixamo model with the same silhouette shader. Adjust the light and the pose of the character. Let's bring in the Cyberhead character. In this shot I wanted a few of them in a row, so move him into a collection and add a new plane. Delete everything except the edges on the side. Scale them on the x-axis. Add a new geometry node setup. Create an instance on points node. Add collection info. Choose the character collection. Now there's an instance of him on every vertice of the mesh. Add more vertices to create more copies of him. Delete one vertice to make space for the character with a different animation. Now you can control what they're all doing with the original collection. Animate them walking in. I will make a separate tutorial about working with different Mixamo animations. Duplicate the original one and move him out of the collection. Parent him to the other ones and position him in the gap that we left for him. Now you can animate him separately from the others. I added a spotlight and parented it to his face. Decrease the radius, give it more power. Increase the effect it has on the volume. Change the color to red. Use the custom distance. This creates this flashlight beam in front of him. Keyframe the power to only add light when he turns his head around. For the render settings, activate the mist pass. To see what the mist pass looks like, go to the viewport shading settings and change the render pass to mist. You can change the mist pass depth in the world settings. In the compositor add a file output node and connect your mist pass to it. Choose output folder. 
Let's bring our render into DaVinci Resolve for post-processing. I'm using the free version by the way. Go to the Fusion tab. We want to drop the frame rate of the animation. Hit Ctrl Spacebar and search for the time speed effect. Set the speed to 2. Now our animation is running 2 times as fast. Copy and paste the time speed effect. Set the speed to 0.5. To get rid of this blending effect, set the interpolation mode to nearest. That causes the animation to only use every second frame, which gives it this choppy look that I was going for. To control the strength of this effect, go to the first time speed node and lower the speeding up effect to something like 1.5. Now to get it back to normal speed, go to the second time speed effect and type in 1 divided by the number you used before. Now the animation is dropping every frame on the third frame. Now I wanted to give it more texture, so I used this comic point overlay. Add a merge node and set the apply mode to multiply. Add a color corrector. Increase the brightness of this texture. Go to the merge node and adjust the scale and the opacity. Bring in some rain overlay footage. I got this one for free from Production Crate. Set the blend mode to screen. Now I don't want this to be all over our footage. Bring in the mist pass we rendered before. Plug it into the mask input of the merge node. Nothing happened. That's because it uses the alpha of the mist pass and not the luminance. So go to the settings of the merge node and switch the channel from alpha to luminance. Use the high and low slider to control where the rain is placed in the depth of the image. Add another layer of rain to the foreground. I created this one myself with a particle system in Blender. Bring it into the fusion composition and connect it to a merge node. Adjust the opacity. To add some glow to the neon signs and the lamps, I used the exponential glow from the Reactor plugins. Reactor is a free plugin set that you can install to fusion. The download for it is in the description. If you installed it, open the Reactor and activate the fast exponential glow. And why do we not use the normal glow that's integrated into Fusion? The top image here is showing what the exponential glow is doing. The bottom one, what the normal glow does. Add the exponential glow before the two rain setups. Add masks around the objects you want to glow. And plug them into the garbage mat of the exponential glow. Adjust the settings of the glow. Add chromatic aberration on top of everything. You will only find this effect in the templates. Adjust the strength. Add lens distortion. Set the distortion model to PF track and use the low order distortion slider. Now switch to the color tab. Add some contrast, saturation and a vignette. This is how I created one shot for a disconnected head. If you feel like wasting some money, I just created this Patreon account. I uploaded a bunch of project files from this short film over there. And I will continue to upload assets, project files and behind the scenes material from my short films. I also uploaded this rain overlay, the slam files from my short film Fishing. And here are a few glimpses of what I'm working on.